After her daughter was born in 2011, violin virtuoso Rachel Barton Pine played her dozens upon dozens of the world's best lullabies. From that musical exploration came Barton Pine's latest CD, Violin Lullabies, featuring works by Brahms, Gershwin, Ravel, Schubert, Strauss, and many more. Having played professionally since the tender age of seven, she's performed with the finest symphonies around the world. And Rachel Barton Pine joins us now. Rachel, good to see you again. Great to be here. Obvious question, why did you do a CD of lullabies? Well, my daughter was born a year and a <laughs> half ago, and you know, you only have two arms, so when I'm holding my baby and nursing her, I can't simultaneously be serenading her. Of course, I sing to her as any mother would, but I also wanted to share with her lullabies, classical music lullabies written for the instrument that I love best, and so I figured I'd do that on recording. Uh, but were, you, were there instances where you actually did play the violin for your daughter, say, when, she was, uh, when you put her down and she wasn't fussy and so forth? Well, it was more about, you know, just when she was hanging out and um, awake and enjoying life, and my husband would hold her while I practiced, and so she's heard many, many hours a day of violin music her whole life. I can imagine that. <laughs> okay, so how did you whittle them down to 25? My understanding is from a total number of about 150 or so. Yeah, I collected these 150 or so lullabies from libraries all over the world, and so many of them were gorgeous. It was just really hard to, you know, narrow it down to 25, but I just thought about, you know, which melodies appeal most to me, and the wonderful thing is there ended up being lots of famous composers, some completely obscure composers, women composers, African-American composers, composers from all kinds of different countries, so there's a real diversity of composers from throughout history who have written lullabies for the violin that are um, pure classical music. Now, let me ask this. Is this is this for the parent's ear or for the child's ear? You know what? It's for anybody who wants to relax to some beautiful little violin pieces. Um, but, you know, definitely being a new parent, I was specifically <laughs> thinking of babies. But, you know, actually of all my 20 plus albums that I've recorded, this is the one that I actually put on when I want to relax. So is I think it right? can work for any age. <laughs> right. This may be hard to do, but do you have a favorite lullaby? Well, the Brahms is very close mm. to my heart because I sing it to my daughter and my mom sang it to me and her mom sang it to her and the violin that I play. Yes, tell um, us about the connection between Brahms and this project. Yeah, well the, the violin was made in 1742 by the great Guineri del Gesu, but in the 1800s Brahms himself selected it for one of his protégés. This very violin. Yes indeed. Um, so it was played by Marie Soldat who frequently played chamber music with Brahms at the piano and so to play the Brahms lullaby on the very violin whose voice Brahms selected is just extraordinary. Oh my goodness, uh, it just, uh, it's almost like time travel, isn't it, kind of, like recreating the sound that was, that was, uh, Absolutely. with such a personal connection to the composer himself. Uh, I know you're, you, you have a a bunch of activities, but you have a foundation. Remind people what that foundation does. Well, the Rachel Elizabeth Barton Foundation, or the REB Foundation, um, we support young artists in a variety of ways. Um, you know, normally you can get scholarships for your lessons um, to help with tuition costs, but all those extra out-of-pocket expenses that aspiring young artists are personally responsible for, um, you know, and their families can't always afford things like sheet music purchase, airfare to competitions, even concert clothes, string for your violin, audition recording sessions. It all adds up, um, doesn't it? Yeah, piano accompanist. And so that's where our foundation comes in. We also provide instrument loans, and it's a great way to honor those who helped me when I was growing up. Now, some of members of our audience may not know that you're have another passion that is performing heavy metal music with earthen <laughs> grave. Yeah, that's the music to wake the baby up. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, does Sylvia like metal music? <laughs> well, you know, there are certain things that are great parts of life, like a glass of fine wine or an R-rated movie or a wonderful heavy metal album that maybe aren't quite appropriate <laughs> for people until they're a little bit maybe older. Later. So maybe later. I'm, I'm saving the Anthrax and Metallica <laughs> for when she's just a little bit farther along in her maturity. <laughs> and how about your future? Future, future projects. What are you up to? Oh, just a million different things. I've got my Mendelssohn Concerto album, which is coming out in September. I'll be appearing at Ravinia, playing all of Paganini's 24 Caprices in a single evening, two nights in a row um, in wow. August. So that's going to be really cool. Tell me about the, uh, tell me the story behind the first lullaby you're going to play. It's by Max Rieger. Yeah, well, you know, this really shows the human side of these, these genius composers. We think of Rieger as this sort of severe, 
late romantic German guy who writes very dense contrapuntal music, and yet here he's written this beautiful, simple melody, and um, m the researcher who did the program notes for the album found this gorgeous historical photo of Rager with one of his little adopted girls sitting on his knee reading her a storybook, and it just shows you that even these composers were, you know, Did parents too. Side. Exactly. Rachel, good to talk to you. And if you want to see Rachel Barton Pine perform in person, you can catch her on May 18th at the Music Institute of Chicago, where she is a life trustee. Or if you have a little one who would benefit from a few lullabies on May 19th, she'll be doing a morning Wiggle Worms concert at the Old Town School, School of Folk Music. And as she mentioned, she'll be at Ravinia in August performing all 24 of Paganini's Caprices, two nights in a row. Wow. You can find all the details on our website. And now, Rachel Barton Pine performs the Cradle Song by by Max Rager. Rachel Barton Pine, accompanied by her album collaborator, Music Institute of Chicago alum, Matthew Hagel.